Chat, what's the pog where he's waiting? You know what I'm talking about? What's this pog right here? Pause champ. I enabled that. I don't even know what it is. Pause champ. I've been making a pretty good living just stealing uh, Chibli's emojis recently. He also, um, uh, he taught me about hold. So I don't know if you're familiar with, uh, with the Drake emoji. That's where Drake stands up and claps. It's possibly the most overused uh, GIF reaction GIF on the GIF keyboard on Twitter. Whenever somebody says anything you agree with, you just pop in and you type Drake, and then he shows up, stands up clapping. Hold is the first frame of that where it looks like he's getting out of his chair, but it doesn't move. It's just a stationary image where it looks, he's like, it's when you think that maybe it's about to pop off. Okay, actually... The triangular ruler is pretty close. Colon, triangular, ruler, hold. That is actually... I know how this looks. You're like, what are you talking about? But if you've ever seen hold, it that's such a good approximation. Your brain kind of fills in the gaps. That's crazy. Isn't Uber Eats the worst? Don't try to stun lock me right off the bat. Now I can't think of anything else except for Uber Eats. Hey, but they had positive, like, free cash flow in the last quarter, as long as you um, don't uh, uh, look at their accounting too closely, <clears throat> which I'm sure um, nobody will, but, like, maybe that's actually not a joke. I don't know. What the, I don't work for the SEC. What do I know? How about the Peloton? Yeah, sorry I'm late. <clears throat> I don't want to brag, but uh, I was doing a Peloton ride today, and T-Pain showed up. So I was going, hi, T-Pain, hi, hi, Teddy, hi, T-Pain. But he was, um, he couldn't hear me because I was just in my house. And he was at the Peloton Studios, um, New York. Is his name Teddy Pain? It's, it's Theodore something, T-Pain, real name. T-Pain's real name, nope, okay, his real name is Fahim Rashid Najam. My mistake. <laughs> Better known by his name, T-Pain. But wait, in, uh, in I'm a Flirt, where he did a feature in 2007, I'm not gonna say who the main artist is, I'm just gonna say that his uh, mind was telling him no, but his body was telling him yeah. He says, uh, Teddy Payne was born the flirt. I think then he says, now I'm a pound dad. I don't know what he's talking about. Maybe like a fist bump or something? It stands for Tallahassee Pain. Oh my god, that's incredible. Ever heard him sing without auto-tune? Yes, I, I go to one of my go-to videos, T-Pain Tiny Desk Concert for sure. It's very good. A lot of the Tiny Desk Concerts are very good, but the, the T-Pain one is the most striking because it actually, at least for me, because uh, I had zero interest in his music in advance of it. I think this speaks for a lot of people. I had almost, I, I almost, I would say I looked down upon T-Pain's music. And then I realized that I was the fool once I heard how talented he actually was. And now I'm unironically, if, if you'll allow me to say it, I'm unironically bumping Tallahassee Payne in the whip. Singing like, I ain't even know it, even know it, even know it, even know it until she called me to the stage and then, and you know what I'm talking about? Also, yeah, he seems super affable and nice. I don't want to brag, but he, uh, he debuted a song during Camille Ramon's 30-minute all-for-one T-Pain ride today. So I'm probably one of the first, um... I don't know, a few thousand people to hear this T-Pain song. I'm not going to spoil it for you. It's about having uh, money and spending it. In the club. Mostly. Maybe completely. But still. 
Sounds like the perfect song for a Peloton owner. I'm gonna be honest, the energy was like really... I've never taken a, a ride with Camille Ramon before, but T-Pain was like rapping this song while I was riding my bike, and I was like, this is a little weird. And then she just kept like... She was singing like interstitials in between the chorus, like some kind of cycling Gary V or something like that. I was like, this is a weird energy, man. Like, I feel like I'm on... I'm on an episode of the rehearsal or something right now, and I'm I'm the one being filmed, but... Yeah, she was going, hey, hey, that's just tips. That's just tips. And she wasn't even biking, man. She And more than, she wasn't just not biking. She wasn't even calling out, uh, like, cadence or resistance. So I don't know what the hell I was doing. I was just, I was just for 10 minutes, I was just like, I don't know, uh, 55 resistance, 80 to 90 cadence. I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. Sorry that happened to you. I mean, it's okay. It was just, like, a little annoying. Mostly, uh, like, All for One is Peloton's weird um, music festival that apparently they do every year. I looked through the... You know what? This could be a fun bit. Peloton All for One 2022 artist lineup, okay? I promise you this is not going to be um, me talking about the Peloton. This is going to be a bit where I don't know the names of any of these artists except for one. So in case you missed it, Peloton's music festival started. Here's their artist list. I'm very excited. Alanis Morissette. I'm all in. I'm, I'm waiting for my 30-minute ride that hopefully is just half of the songs from Jagged Little Pill. I'm telling you, that's a PR waiting to happen. Amber Mark. No idea. No idea who that is. Becky G. This is in alphabetical order, by the way. Never heard of her. Becky Hill. A lot of Beckys. I'm guessing there's maybe like a little bit of a country music tilt to this. Big Sean. I've heard his name before. I'm not sure I could tell you what Big Sean has done. He's one of the big rappers. There's there's big rappers. Notorious B.I.G. Um, he sings Big Papa, of course. And then there's little rappers. Little Bow Wow. Little B, etc., etc. I don't really know what Big Sean's thing is. But I don't know any of his songs. Bob Moses. Never heard of him. Carrie Underwood, I do know Carrie Underwood. I think, th does she sing Before He Cheats or is that Miranda Lambert? Wait, Miranda Lambert has um, sh gunpowder and lead and Carrie Underwood sings Before He Cheats. Probably not going to do that one. This one just offends me. Chase Ampersand Status. Chase and Status? I get the wordplay. Never heard of them before in my entire life. Chase and Status. It sounds like a country music duo that raps. Their dubstep? All right, even worse. Just kidding. I don't know. Salsa on my balls, boys. Tomo, you want to leave the room? I'm in the middle of a good bit here, okay? You can just make your way out of the, the domicile. I appreciate that. Thank you. Florence and the Machine. Okay, I do know two Florence and the Machine songs. I know, um... I know, um... Is one of them called Shake It Off or something? Or Take It Off? And then the other one is called The Dog Days Are Over. Would I do a 30-minute Florence in the Machine ride? Probably. Hopefully it does. And don't even get me started, because by the way, next is Flume. And I've never heard of Flume. Following that is Green Day, okay? And there was a 30-minute all-for-one Green Day ride today. I said, you know what? I'm not a huge fan of modern Green Day. But hopefully, if on a 30-minute ride celebrating Green Day, they got to have some stuff from the 90s, right? That's where you're wrong. Wake Me Up When September Ends, Boulevard of Broken Dreams, a song from American Idiot the Musical. Uh, what's the holiday? I don't mind holiday. It's got some Vancouver Canucks memories, I guess, associated with it. Um, and then at the end of the ride, one basket case. That's it. They gave me one basket case. Can you, can you just let me get a 90s Green Day ride, please? <clears throat> I be ye. I be ye. -Y -I. I be ye. I be ye. I be ye. I be ye, E B A, E B A, <laughs> I be you. I am. Am I? Who am I? I don't know who this is. Okay, and that's fine. John Mayer, not a chance. No, no offense to John Mayer. If you think I'm doing a 30-minute high-intensity interval training ride to seven John Mayer songs, you've lost your mind. Okay. K Trenata. I don't know who that is. K Trinata. Lato. Sounds like something I would accidentally order at a Japanese Starbucks. Lil Baby. 
Do they work with Big Sean? Is there a, I don't know who Lil Baby is either. I think this is, this is evident enough. Wait, people love Lil Baby. I'm, I'm learning a lot here, okay? For, here's what I learned, okay? People said, NL, you should listen to Amber Mark. She's good. <clears throat> and then people said, you should listen to K Trinata. And they said, you should listen to some Lil Baby. Okay, fair enough. I'll take that. Maggie Rogers. I don't know who this is. And Flume. You got to listen to Flume as well. My legs are going to be tired this weekend, man. Maroon 5. I have to be careful because my wife is in the other room listening. She's a big Maroon 5 stan. I'm, I'm torn on the Maroon 5 30-minute uh, ride. I'm not an enormous Maroon 5 fan. I've heard the songs uh, before. But there is a Cody Rigsby ride. I might consider it. You know, in a pinch, I might consider it. 30-minute Sam Yo Muse ride. I've never been a Muse guy, but I am a big Sam Yo guy. I'll, I'll probably take that ride. I'll give you my review on it. Nikki Jam. I don't know who that is. Nikki Jam. I'm just waiting for it to come to come down <laughs> until we get to Nikki Jam. Cheap chick in the city. Um, Odessa. Odessa? That's EDM. Okay. That's mid EDM. Purple Disco Machine. Can I tell you, Purple Disco Machine? I've never heard of them before, but I thought I'd heard of them before because I had heard of uh, Swedish House Mafia. I thought Purple Disco Machine and Swedish House Mafia were the same thing. Rascal Flats saw a 30 minute Dennis Morton Rascal Flats ride pop up. I will do any Dennis Morton ride. I said to myself, 0% chance. There's no way I'm doing a 30 minute country music ride to Rascal Flats. Rufus Du Soul. Odessa is from Bellingham. Okay, that's all I need to know. Say no more. Who is Rufus Du Soul? Rufus Du Soul. He's pretty good. Seen them live, they're okay. He's EDM as well. There's a lot of EDM. Hey, who is Saweetie? So Saweetie? Saweetie? We got a delay today. We're not we're not on that one second Twitch delay. Maybe Twitch is having some issues. So Weedy is good too. You know what? I'm realizing I'm out of touch, man. How about SoFi Tucker? <laughs> that can't be how that's pronounced. With two K's? Sophie Tucker? Is she sponsored by the by the financial services company? Wait, so no, so Weedy did not make smell yo dick. Come on. They're not doing a 30-minute ride to smell your dick. There's some very problematic lines in that song. Mostly in the man's verse at the end. Swedish House Mafia, by the way. Not only easily confused with Purple Disco Machine, but also on the Peloton Music Festival list. T-Pain, already knocked that one out, had a pretty good time. Uh, the 1975... I would rather have maybe the best album from 1975, which in my opinion, probably Born to Run by Bruce Springsteen, who's not on the list, by the way. Um, I mean, it starts Thunder Road, 10th Avenue, Freeze Out. I forget where we go from that. It might just be straight into Born to Run. Then you got um, Backstreets. I mean, Jungle Land is there as well. They do need a Sufjan Stevens ride, man. Sufjan Stevens write a song about falling in love with your childhood best friend who is uh, the same gender as you, and you're not gay, and then he calls it something like Des Moines, Iowa. That's my, that's my favorite Sufjan Stevens bit. I'm still waiting for him to, for him to hit the other 48 states. There's nothing wrong with Des Moines, I'm just saying he's got to pick another state, man. It's been 16 years or something like that. Okay, the Beach Boys? Sure, I'll do a ride to the Beach Boys. Thievery Corporation? I honestly thought this band existed just to get one song on the Garden State soundtrack. Tuvalo? I don't know how I know how that's pronounced. I know that it's not pronounced Tovlo. It's Tuva, apparently, or Tuve. 
I'm not really familiar with their performance, their performances. Um, and the Wu-Tang Clan. Okay, of course, maybe I can finally learn about Gravel Pit and, uh, and Sips and I can bond over that. But maybe, maybe this list isn't as bad as I thought it was. Maybe it's an opportunity for me to discover uh, new music. When will there be a beta ban ride? Dude, come on. I mean, Dry the Rain itself, that could be a great finisher. Starts up, you got you got some flat road feel. Then you can you can climb to when they introduce the muted trumpet near the end. If there's something inside that you wanna say, say it out loud, it'll be okay. Oh man, that honestly, on almost every road trip I do, that's side one, track one. It's also side one, track one on the three EPs, as you know, if you've seen High Fidelity. But anyway. Name three artists post-2010 that got famous, that you like. Okay. I mean, okay, I'm going to count Kendrick Lamar, because I don't think anybody uh, in, the, in the mainstream knew who he was uh, until Good Kid, Mad City, which must have been like 2012, okay? I don't care when they wrote their first song that came out on Spotify or whatever. And then... Okay, hear me out here. What about, um, what about Best Coast? Are they, are they 09 or 2010? I'm telling you, all of them are going to be 2010 to like 2012. That counts. We're going to put Best Coast in there. Best Coast, pretty good. I don't know if they even still make music. It's been a while. 2009, sadly. Okay, I can't do it. I'm fucked. <clears throat> Slash marker, Sporkle. What, Sporkle? What is slash Marker Sporkle? Sporkle? Slash Marker Super Auto Pets. Okay. Best Coast still makes stuff? Okay, so for people watching on YouTube, you're probably like, why is he talking about Best Coast? Uh, a band from 12 years ago, or at least that was, it got popular 12 years ago. Someone in chat dared me to name three musicians or bands who got famous in the 2010s or later. I said Kendrick Lamar, then I racked my brain for 45 seconds and said, does Best Coast count? So I'm not going to say that I got my finger on the pulse of, uh, of modern music. I think that would be a ridiculous statement, okay? That I like. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I like. Because there's... Obviously, I could name bands that got famous. I could probably name like, you know, four or five. But that I like... And I, I was not going to cheat either, okay? Like, I like a couple... Um, Chiverch's songs, but I, I'm not, is I've never listened to anything outside of the singles, so I'm not going to be like, um, Chiverch's. Like, that's, that's, or, oh, I really like Gautier's Somebody That You Used To Know. Like, I don't think that's a fair assessment, you know? Hold on. Jellyfish Can Go Off. Carly Rae Jepsen. This is not a hater comment. I would not say I don't like Carly Rae Jepsen. All I would say is that I've never really gone deep into the Carly Rae Jepsen discography. So I can't, I'm not going to steal valor and say that, oh, I'm such a big Carly Rae Jepsen guy. Do you have any opinion on Caro Caro Benito? Okay, thank you, thank you. Caro Caro Benito, band that got famous in the 2010s or later that I like. I be bumping Benito generation in the car all the time. It's like, what if a Game Boy soundtrack had a voice? Great, uh, that, that, that's number two. We got, we got two of them on the list now. I mean, again, so people are like, don't you like Dua Lipa? When I hear Dua Lipa songs, I'm like, you know, this is a, a, a good pop song. But I, I definitely am not like, um, I'm not seeking out Dua Lipa albums. I'm not, I'm not going, hey, play Dua Lipa, you know? I'm, I think it would be stolen valor to claim that I'm a Dua Lipa fan. But when I hear it, I'm like, this is catchy. Don't come out. Don't go, son. Don't go, son. Don't dance on me now. I'm familiar. Plus, isn't she like the UN ambassador to Kosovo or something right now? Or the Kosovo ambassador to the UN? So in many ways, she's kind of like a diplomat. She's like a hero. People are like, yes. A lot of people are saying question mark. A lot of people are saying yes. I told you, which is crazy for me because un until recently, I actually thought she was Brazilian. So when I saw the headline, I was like, 
why is why is a Brazilian pop star the Kosov Kosovian ambassador to the United Nations? But why did you think she was Brazilian? I don't know. I would never seen her face before in my life. I just assumed, you know, hey, this sounds like this music came from Brazil. <laughs> Didn't sound like it came from, from the U.S. or Canada. It sounded like it came from somewhere else. So I said, you know what? Eh, just play the odds. It's probably Brazil. Best Subway cookie. I hate this team, by the way, just so you know. But that's fine. Best Subway cookie. I don't get the cookies at Subway because I'm, I'm based and Harvest Cheddar Sun Chip Pilled. Um, I know everybody likes the, the white chocolate macadamia nut cookies. And uh, occasionally, like, I'll steal one from my wife. And I'm like, that's delicious. For a long time, I thought that macadamia nuts tasted like white chocolate because of that cookie. I was like, man, like peanuts are okay. Almonds are good. But macadamia nuts literally just tastes like ice cream. Then someone told me that I'm stupid. And I was like, you know what? That's pretty fair. Let's try something like this. Regardless... I, I'm actually a little different. I like the, the M&M cookies, honestly. I'm not trying to just, you know, be uh, different. I've just always been like an M&M cookie sort of guy. But I, again, I like never get them, basically. Is stealing cookies from Subway cringe or based? How are you stealing cookies from Subway? They're in a, a hopper where the opening faces the person behind the counter. Do you have like a 10 foot long arm? I don't know. Do you have, do you have like a, one of those grabbers with like a, a, a 180 degree turn in it? How do you, how do you take it? Oh, if you're the employee. Oh, based, based. Sounds a lot like the chicken heresy before you converted. You know what you sound like right now is the people making like web three toasters. Who are just shoveling hundreds of millions of dollars of investor money into the furnace um, to work in a big glass building. And then whenever anyone criticizes them and says it's the worst idea they've ever heard, they're like, well, they laughed at Albert Einstein, too. Okay? They also laughed at some people who had fucking horrible ideas, I bet. I cleaned my crusty whiteboard while listening to this stream. How does your whiteboard get crusty is just an interesting question for me. Did it have, like... Because I don't know if you guys are in the same boat, but especially when I was a, a younger man, when I was in my early 20s, I would get like these periods where I'm like, before the rise and grind set existed, I would be like, I'm going to get my life together. I'm going to start like making lists for things I need to do because as soon as I make the list, then it feels good to cross it off the list. And I'm going to add like, I'm going to write my daily schedule out. I'm going to wake up early. I'm going to work out. I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to come back. I'm going to clean my house. I'm going to blah, 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 blah. And then like... Six months later, day two's tasks are just written on the whiteboard behind me. And now I have another task, which is clean the whiteboard. Like, I've just basically, my enthusiasm outstripped my discipline. And, uh, like, six months later, I'm shamefully erasing the shit that I was supposed to do in February off the whiteboard that I didn't do. And I'm like, well, if I didn't do it by now and I'm still alive, I guess it wasn't that important. We're on eight there. We're knocking on the door. We've, we've gone seven, eight, nine, which is why six is afraid of seven. I've heard it from, from authoritative sources. Seven, nine, eight. Well, whatever, you know. I have a nearly two year old child, so uh, sometimes my counting gets affected by her counting, and we end up with a little cross countination. You got number one rule of this game. You got to take super auto when you see it. Super auto pencils, I think, is as good as it gets. But that you know what? Does she know any jokes? Great question. Um, she knows she she doesn't really have great jokes right now. But she started telling like pseudo knock knock jokes. So she'll say knock knock and I says I say who's there and then she says it's me. And then she laughs. And I'm like, "You know what? Not only did she get me, 
But she's right. It is her. I just imagine in her head, she doesn't really get knock-knock jokes. And she's like, how does he not know it's me? Looks like Ryan was a banger. That's true. That was an original. She uses that a lot. In fact, she actually, she's on like the next level now. Um, what she does now is she'll say the Peppa Pig theme song. It, like out loud, she'll go, I'm Peppa Pig. This my brother George. This mommy pig and daddy pig. So this is without even watching the show. This is just now she just recites the intro. And after she says looks like daddy pig, she says looks like Ryan. So she actually sets him up and she knocks him down. We should have croissanted you in my opinion. But let's, let's give ourselves that option. The, like this, why I'm modestly annoyed. The forgetting to do two level up situation and the lion situation have actually gotten a lot better since the cyberbullying started. But then like, now it's like one in three times I make the mistake. And then people who see things that doesn't happen every time go, every time. That's the tilting part for me, is that you're just lying. I know you don't think it's a lie because you feel like that's what happens, but the facts of like the world contradict what you read on Facebook, okay? You got a little recency bias, you've got a little... Is it Dunning-Kruger that's like, when you get one piece of data, you're like, I'm so smart, but actually like your intellect level is like here and like PhD level candidates are like here. That's Dunning-Kruger. I knew that. Honestly, I knew that before I read about it on Reddit, too. Did you know I saw a study today? Oh, we're fucked. Gaming Gamer Guy 4? I saw a study today, um, or a survey, I should say. Uh, Do you know one in five American teenagers who took this survey described themselves as being on YouTube all day? That is insanely good for business. Sorry, let me, let's start the bit over. That is insane. Insanely good for business. Did you read more than the abstract? This was in Business Insider. They do not have an abstract. They don't write uh, boring journals. They, they take the boring journals and then summarize them uh, badly into one sentence. That is like, why don't more men believe in astrology? Forgot to tell you yesterday, that's two wins. I'm staying at the Fairmont in Vancouver, so that's where I need restaurant recommendations. Okay, I remember from yesterday. It depends on the Fairmont, okay? Are you staying at the Fairmont Pacific Rim? In which case, congratulations on your incredible job. That's right at like Waterfront Station. Look, if you're at the Pacific Rim, okay? First off, watch out for Category 5 uh, Kaiju. Secondly, if you're on the company dime, go to Bodnist, the restaurant inside of the hotel. It is... I can try this. It is the Pacific Rim. Holy cow. You are a software developer. I'm just guessing. Software developer. Um, High-ranking senior engineer. Quantitative analyst at a big five... A Canadian bank or American bank? You don't answer that question, by the way. Um, let me be a legendary swimmer. Thank you, good sir. <laughs> um, anyway, sorry, sorry. You should, um, if, if you now that I know you're on the company dime, Bodnist in that hotel is incredible. It's very much haute cuisine, small portions, interesting food. Um, but I would, I would definitely recommend it for a dining experience. I'm trying to think of what else. I mean, Miku showed up in Vancouver's, like, the r slash Vancouver um, most overrated restaurants thread. But I think both Miku and Manami are really good. Miku is closer to you. I think it's very good. And uh, I think the people that said that it's bad are mostly just haters. They're mostly just jealous. Green is not their color. Overrated, but still good. I would accept that. I mean, that's how it always goes, right? Like a restaurant 10 years ago gets popular. And then like people that are in the know popularize the restaurant. And then it gets out to the normies like me. 
and then I'm eating it. I'm telling people that it's amazing. And then the other people have already moved on to published on Maine. They're like, oh, imagine going to Miku in 2022. You've got to go to published on Maine. You've got to go to uh, St. Lawrence. You've got to go to, you know, uh, the bodega and all that. So like, I'm, I'm always like four years behind the food trend, I'll admit, but still. You got to go to the, the Subway Cafe in Yale Town. When I was in Vancouver, I liked Yale Town. We stayed at the Rosedale on Robson, so we had good access to all that stuff. Dude, honestly, Yale, I like Yale Town a lot. Um, Robson, though, I don't, I don't know where the Rosedale is. Robson is a great food street as well, especially the, the further north you get, the closer you get to, um, like, Stanley Park. Great Korean food. Like, actually the best Korean food in the city proper, for sure. Round seven. You could probably hippo. You could probably do lobster in the hippo. Buff it. Yeah, there's a, this, is a, this is a hippo chance. Why does Robson Street almost smell, always smell like piss? I don't, I don't know if you want the answer. The answer is that people be pissing. It's the same thing like, um, you know, if you're on Granville Street, why does Granville Street smell like piss? I'm not sure if you want to know. I'm not sure if you're in a good enough emotional state to receive that information. We're going to get other faint triggers. Hmm. You know what? We can get a faint trigger. We can add a hedgehog to the team next turn, even if it kills our cricket in the process. Nah. I'm like, nah. You were so confused about what bald energy was? Yes, correct. Because Chip said, in my head, NL isn't bald. I don't know. He just doesn't have bald energy. I didn't take offense to it at all. I just wish that he'd taken more time to talk about it because I think it's an interesting topic to dissect. Like, what is bald energy? I think there's a few kinds of bald energy. There's, um, you know, uh, Jared from Storage Wars energy. That's bald. There's um, Lex Luthor. There's Steve Austin. There's Wojak. Like, there's, there's a lot of bald energy out there. Hank Schrader. Captain Jean-Luc Picard, those are, those are all different kinds of energy. They're not all the same energy. Bruce Willis in Die Hard does not have the same energy as Jared from Storage Wars. Come on. What is that? It's a, it's a sentence that doesn't even make sense. I'm, I know you're going to say, to be fair, I don't even know who Jared from Storage Wars is. That's very fair. I'll give you that one. Mike Ehrman Trout. Nobody knows Storage Wars. You guys remember when I made fun of Storage Wars Canada? This was a very small arc. I made fun of Storage Wars Canada, and then someone tweeted me and was like, hey, I like that bit where you made fun of Storage Wars Canada. And then one of the stars of Storage Wars Canada, I guess just searches, name searches Storage Wars Canada on Twitter, and then replies to all of her haters every day. I don't even remember what she said, but it was something like, hey, just so you know, everybody involved in the show like, worked really hard on it. It sucks to have be criticized for that. I was like, oh, no. Like, I agree, but oh, no. Just five more wins, Copium. You don't even know, okay? You don't even know what we're about to accomplish. How do you get so freaking strong? None of your units died to two hedge. All of your units have more than four HP. Is this even possible? Hello. Hello. Oh my God. It's me. Look at me. You're flying. Hello. Look at me. I'm on mommy. Hi. Look at me. <laughs> yeah, don't lean back, honey. I'm silly. You're silly. <laughs> oh my goodness. No joke, I've been trying to give her piggyback rides because sometimes your arms get really sore after carrying your baby for a long time. 
But every time I pick her up and put her on my shoulders, she just starts slapping the crap out of my head. That's true. It's not, I swear it's not a joke, but it, when I put her on my shoulders, she just starts to laugh and it's then slap true. in the top of my head. It's oh, true. Uh, my, my knee hurts. Your knee hurts? Yeah. Oh, careful, honey. <laughs> you got a boo-boo right there? What you doing? What you doing? Pick up me. Get picked up? No, mine. Can you wave? Can you wave to the camera? Hi. <laughs> hi. Hi. Can you what's, say onion? What's hi? What's hi? Oh. What's hi? Hi means. Hi, means hello. Honey, you can't lean back like this on mommy's back, okay? No, my back. You're gonna fall backwards. Don't even think about it, buddy. Go of the door, honey. Here you go. Have fun with mommy, okay? Very cute. Very cute. I suppose melon's not that good here. Now that I think about it, the baby has a better life than I do. Dude, most babies have a better life than most adults. I wouldn't get too hung up on it. They don't work. They, yes, they go to like daycare or school, but like all of daycare and school is essentially just activities. Like it's disguised learning, but mostly you're just hanging out with your friends and like singing songs. All of your responsibilities are provided for you. I'll take a pair. I'll take a, I'll take a pair. They're basically, they're just hanging out. Yeah, exactly. I'm I, honestly... There's a part of me that thinks, you know what? Why wouldn't we buy a melon in this situation? Sure, we lose the melon, but you get three defense. It's not three health. It's not great, but it's better than rolling, I think, on lethal. I mean, at least at least we're getting something out of it. Yo, A. Aaron, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Oh, if only this hedgehog was insane. It could do so much more damage. Don't, 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 don't. We can't beat this squad. We're gonna beat this. We're gonna tie this squad. We can beat this squad. Okay, that's seven. I almost took great personal offense to this statement until I realized it was in response to the baby comments. But as a, this is editor's note, as a, as a baby, you don't know anything and are completely helpless slash worthless. But without the editor's note in there, it just says you don't know anything and are completely helpless slash worthless. I was like, my, that's like an insane personal attack. <laughs> what did I do to deserve that? 
then I thought about it for a second and I was like, oh, I remember I rolled it back on the mental blockchain and was like, I remember what we were talking about a second ago. I, mean, I guess I'd like you to do some more damage. I don't know. I'm not that snake pilled right now. You know, uh, especially because you'll just die as soon as I put you out there. But it's, I mean, there, this run's got some problems if we're being honest with one another, I think. I, I do think describing a, a, a child as worthless is maybe a little <laughs> too far. Simply because they offer no economic value to society. I mean, they actually... A, a child is worth more than you, to be honest. Because even though they're not accomplishing anything now, they have so much human capital. All of their future value to society is still yet to be realized. Some of yours has already been realized and consumed as a result. I mean, if we were choosing somebody to go to the grist mill, who says no? Shut up, but it's true. <clears throat> has he covered the, the T-Pain Peloton ride? Imagine my surprise when I picked Camilla Ramon's... Uh, T-Pain all for one ride with T-Pain in the thumbnail. And would you believe it? T-Pain showed up in the ride. And looked like, with no disrespect to T-Pain, looked like he had no idea what was going on, which is fair, because everybody in the studio is on stationary bicycles, and T-Pain's just there going like, yeah, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. I don't really know what's going on here. It's just like, just being like a normal guy on the, on the stage for quite some time. It was a, it was a little weird, but I, I mean, I had a pretty good run. I think I ended up at a 357 or something like that. Two out of 10 impression? He kind of sounds like that. It's not a perfect impression, but it, I thought it was pretty good. He's slightly more nasally than me, and he talks with like, a, sometimes he talks really, it's not a consistent cadence. He's not like a tuck da 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 I hate this team. I'm rolling. It's the same team, but slightly better. I'll take that. This is an abandon. <laughs> it's not that bad. But the wizard is my homie, though. So true. I Now, you know what? You've ruined my weekend. I'll be a circular pet, like a blowfish, for example. Um, you've ruined my weekend, because I hadn't thought about that in, in a few days, at, the, at a minimum. And now you got me thinking about... 10,000 years searched, I've roamed these halls, looking for the wizard to unslap my balls. By the way, Getty Lee gets a lot of credit and deservedly so, deservedly so. don't get me wrong. I'm going, I'm going weirdo chinchilla build here. Um, you know what's an underrated song from a bass perspective? Everyone talks about Rush. Nobody talks about the bass line from uh, Hungry Like the Wolf by Duran Duran. He'd be, he'd be walking that thing. He'd be going like... Because Rush is better. True, but Duran Duran deserves some credit for, for the instrumentation on, on uh, Rio. I talk about it constantly. All right, never mind. Same with girls on film. All right, apparently people talk about this. I didn't realize that there was a... You know what? It's round three dog, bitch. <laughs> it's, it's Britney, bitch. Sorry, um, I didn't mean that or whatever. Some people are saying this, though. Some people are putting some respect on, on the Duran Duran catalog that deserves the respect. I respect and appreciate you for respecting and appreciating them. Did you see the guy who tried to run over a kid in his Tesla to prove that the Tesla wouldn't hit the kid? 
I did not see that. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I wouldn't have uploaded that video. I, w I mean, I wouldn't have taken that video in the first place. But I definitely would not have uploaded it to the internet. That seems... Unbelievably stupid. Oh, it was a fake child. Wait, was this was it Nathan Fielder? Is that what was happening? This sounds like a Nathan for you bit, as someone who's really only watched the rehearsal and little clips of Nathan for you uh, would say. Is Nathan Fielder the dude who has a bit where he's a magician and he steals someone's cum? No, he's he steals someone's urine to run an analysis on it to see if they had extra dopamine in their urine, which would indicate that they had fun hanging out with him that day. It was the only scientific quantitative way to determine if he had made himself into an entertaining friend for the, uh, for the other person. Did you pay out? No. We got 10. No. Ah! Ah! I, 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 Okay, 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 okay. I can still, sorry, I can still hear it. Oh my God. Oh, I just got, I muted it for you guys. Yeah, sorry to anybody out there who's presently under like a, the effect of powerful hallucinogens or whatever. There we go. I've got it slider. <laughs> My Windows volume is at 46. Curse to Golf is at 2. And this is the... I mean, even now, I'm like, I might want to put it on 1, honestly. That's, it's still slightly too loud, I think, but... Let's, let's pull it down to 1. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. Holy cow. I got 10 wins in that last one, right? Not, no, no scamming, no scamming. Okay. It is a bop, though. No doubt about that. Screen's making me feel a certain way. Cursed to golf. All right. <clears throat> Slash marker. Cursed to golf. Hey, honey, wake up. There's a new sports roguelite out, so you know that NL's gonna start the video by saying, Hey, honey, wake up. Uh, this is Curse to Golf. It's a golf roguelite where you are about to win a golfing tournament, then you unfortunately pass away and get sent to golf purgatory where you have to use abilities, power-ups, and your own skills on the links in order to complete 18 devilish procedurally generated holes and ascend your way to golf heaven. Lest you be banished to golf hell. Let's start a new round. Are you suggesting that maybe practice would have been a good idea? Watch this, watch this, watch this. Oh! It is the perfect song for a broken heart. It really makes you feel not like you're thinking about Robocop, but you're thinking about Officer Willis and also his family. Shout out to his family. Dio, stop time mid-flight. This ace card stops time and freezes the ball mid-flight and leads to uh, a, a reference of, oh, what, you're approaching me in chat? The ball drops straight below. That way you can land it precisely. I'm gonna look at my cards. Plus two, time stop, practice shot, plus two, time stop, practice shot. Okay. I'm simply going to drop the ball down. Seems very sensible to me. Sometimes you gotta play a little chip and chase. And then I'm going to do the same thing. And do it right here, I trust it. This is where Dan fell apart. Oh, was he doing something like this? We're not so different, you and I. Nothing going on down here. Okay, turns out that wasn't a great shortcut. I'm not using any cards yet. Let me, let me do a driver strats. I forgot there was water there. Final shot. That's what you think? 
Let me get a quick plus two. You know what? Let's be smart. It's all about living. It's not about getting the lowest score. It's about living. Land here. Build good habits. Bounce me off the wall. You want to land in, in Dr. Light's uh, tunnel and see what's going on up there? I kind of do. Well, here we go. Forget Dr. Light's tunnel. I don't need it anyway. Ooh, smash me! <laughs> you know what? Cancel me. Cancel me. I would like to make it to our other fan, if possible. I should be her only fan. How far can we look? Far enough to see if our iron will work for us, I think. It will not work for us. This has got to be a driver play. It's gotta be it's gotta be pretty damn good. It's gotta be like that. Insane shot. Insane shot. So I was I was scared of it. Okay, this is obviously Oh dude, the shot is not as cursed as I thought it was. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> Ooh. Worth, worth, worth. I'll take that. That was scary. Okay, we got, we're not losing hole one. I'll tell you that right now. If you thought that was going to happen, you're in for a rude awakening. I'd like to land it pre-bunker, please. It's running out of time. It's running out of time. I choose to take my stun. It ran out of gas. It was going to explode. Okay, well, you know what? We'll, we'll treat that as a little tutorial. Why didn't you read the card? It says what it did. Hey, did you learn how to drive a fucking car by reading the book on driving a car? No, that's like heavy 15-year-old energy. I know how to drive because I know what a fucking do not enter sign looks like. I know what a drive how to drive because I know what a sign that says slippery when wet looks like. It's idiocy. You got to take the damn thing out and like pop the clutch a couple of times to understand how to use it, okay? People are like, oh, oh, why... Uh, why am I no good at talking to girls? I read a lot of articles online. Because you got to get out there and, uh, you know, you got to bomb a couple of open mics first before you get that kind of confidence, okay? You can't, you can't just uh, spend your whole life in the library and then get behind the wheel of a damn spaceship. You got to give it a chance. This is the same shot. No, that's much worse. You can do spins too after your shot. Listen, listen, you have to lose in order to get that. Why, why would I take advice from someone who's lost in the game? I'm someone who's never even faced elimination. And you're, you're given, I need to finish. They need to give me like a scripted death in order for me to unlock a mechanic that would make it easier for me to survive. Then this is a nightmare shot. No, this is a totally normal shot. You take your wedge. You drop it down into the fan, which we can't really see because of the HUD, but that's okay. It's almost unfuck upable. Excuse me? The fans, in all circumstances, hither to this point, the fans pushed you across the hazard. The fans kill your momentum and, and send you. So, so what the hell is the play then? Pop the clutch. We're going to live through this hole. Kind of unbelievably. I mean, let's not get too cocky, but we, we could two-tap it and not even sweat it, man. It's all right. I, I tried to get a little finesse with it. If you're on doubt, like, honestly, you're going to be like, we got a chance. I'm telling you, you don't have a chance. It's, it's actually so insanely over for you. Not to mention how many cards we got in our back pocket. No comedic timing. Okay. Pay out the believers. I'm not using a plus one for that. 
If you if you use a plus one in that situation because you get scared, you better wear uh, elbow pads when you go down your damn staircase, okay? Will we survive this hole? We did. Life's fraught with mundane danger like that. U.S. president's tier list when? I don't know. I don't, I don't think Twitch is ready for me to say that Abraham Lincoln's a good president. I think that if I put any president in the A or S tier, people would be like, but he was a bad guy. And I would be like, yes, but I'm ranking them relative to each other. And you got to consider that he came after James Buchanan. I mean, to be honest, if you look at the 1860s, well, like, let's say like the 1840s to the 1860s, they had like six of the seven worst presidents of all time in a row. They went from like asshole to asshole to incompetent asshole to maybe the worst president like in the 1800s at the very least. And then Abraham Lincoln. That, can you imagine how your lungs would feel after you got a breath of Abraham Lincoln after you've been, you've been huffing on James Buchanan for two years? Anyway. Hold on. I don't want to land on the TNT. That's a given. What if we landed on the bounce pad? And whatever happens, happens. And it, it's simple. We just want to shoot slightly too far to the left. Buchanan stands blown out. True, 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 true. That's pretty true. That's true. We don't want to use an iron here. <laughs> That's going to do it. That's going to do it. That's going to do it. No! <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think you got to put you got to put FDR up there. Again, you're ranking them relative to each other. You just got to get out of the bunker here. FDR has got to be up there. Lincoln's got to be up there. I don't know. It might be controversial. I'm not a. I'm not a student of American history. I would say there's a real chance you put George Washington up there. Certainly not a perfect guy, especially by modern standards. Did also win the Amer. Well, was the general who won the American Revolution and abdicated his presidency, setting the precedent for a two-term limit. That's more than most presidents get. That's for sure. Plus, he's on the damn dollar. I mean, you got to remember again. There's some, <laughs> there's some ass president. There's some absolutely horrible presidents. Plus, he never told a lie. Enjoy your Peloton uh, All for One Music Festival this weekend. I'm very excited for a seven and a half minute arms and intervals ride with Swedish House Mafia. I hope you'll you'll take the ride with me. Um, enjoy your weekend. I'm gonna type slash raid. And I will see you on Monday.